Hello everyone, uh, my name is Aysam, I work for Rescale Analytics. We are a company specialized in, uh, in consultancy workshops and we develop supply chain data science applications uh, using R and Python. Uh, today I want to show you just a tutorial about an application that we developed for a client. Uh, this application is called Invoice Buckets and the client is focused on retail business. So in retail it's very important to analyze the buckets of invoices, for example the consumer behavior in terms of the 0 to 100 drums bucket or from 100 to 200 and so on. To know which uh, uh, buckets to focus on and to uh, improve the marketing campaigns on these buckets and which buckets provides in general more profit to the business. So the invoice bucket application uh, is analysis for this uh, invoice bucket. This is not real data, but the same methodology we deployed to our clients. Uh, and here, for example, we have departments. So this data is concerning these departments. If you want to filter out other uh, departments, we can filter out these departments. And we can also select stores if we need to. So we can focus on Dubai store, or Bahrain store, or so and so on. And uh, here we can uh, we are seeing the average units per invoice. So, for example, from the uh, for the hundred drums bucket, we can see that the items are from one, or let's say one, or one point five sometimes. So sometimes there are two units per invoice, while from the two hundred bucket tends to be more from two to three, and so on. And you can see that they are increase by the. Uh, the value of the invoice increase right and then uh, you can also uh, see the trend in other uh, variables let's look at the revenue for example and you can see that the revenue also is increasing by the increase of the value of the buckets not necessarily for example here those are more more or less the same and the 200 drums bucket is providing as much revenue as the 300 drums bucket while for example if you look at the 5000 dirhams bucket you can see that the revenue is a little bit more than uh, what is uh, a little bit more than the 200 dirhams bucket while more than 5000 you can actually see that there are less revenue produced from these buckets because the frequency of people buying more than 5000 dirhams is less right okay and here you can see the month to month uh, revenue from example from Jan to Feb uh, there is a decrease usually in the United Arab Emirates the from months from November till January there are high sales and from and then there is a stability on the following months and then there is also uh, a tendency to increase from November onwards so you can see that from Jan there is high sales because of the festivities and the people coming to you, the United Arab Emirates for tourism and this kind of things. So the purchasing tends to increase. And you can also select other variables, for example the profit. And you can see that they are following the same pattern here. So an increase and then decrease, marginal increase and then uh, March and April are more or less the same, but this is only for the 100 dirhams bucket. Okay, so this is a good way to analyze the buckets and to see which uh, invoice buckets more consumers are, are tending to buy and which invoice buckets have less consumers. And what can you do in terms of marketing to increase the bucket uh, that you want? What kind of products you want to introduce? Next, we can also go to the forecast tab. So it's always good for the business to provide visibility to the future and it's good in many ways. Uh, for example, in this, this is the profit wise. Let's focus on the unit sold, for example. So if you know that this is going to happen, you can expect that there will be a decrease in these months and going from May till let's say uh, July and then August and then there is an increase in uh, uh, November and December. 
So when you know that there is a decrease in the following two or three months, you can expect to uh, have lower uh, lower inventory turnover and also have much stock in your stores not moving. So you can try to do marketing campaigns to increase the footfall and increase the moving of the of these goods in your store. So when there is a decrease, you can, the marketing campaigns can start. While when there is an increase. So we know that there will be more consumers coming to the stores. So accordingly, we can align with our suppliers to increase the replenishment uh, order size. So we can cope up with this increase in uh, demand, right? So forecasting is a very good way to provide visibility to the business, operational wise, uh, commercial wise, and also to the whole supply chain end to end. So this is the forecast from May till November and also we are providing the seasonality. So seasonality is which months tends to be high in sales and which months tends to be low in sales. For, so here for example January tends to be usually high in sales with low variability, not many variants there. While for example uh, you can see that July is the month with the highest variability. So sometimes the sales are very high, sometimes the sales are very low. Usually because there could be some kind of uh, special events that happened in these months. But overall it gives us a good picture about the performance of months and also gives us a good picture about the uh, what's happening uh, in the market in these months. So here, for example, a lot of tourists comes. That's why there are increase in sales. There are a lot of promotions. There is uh, the uh, festivals and these kind of things. Here there is, uh, let's say, Christmas uh, season and shopping increase also. So we can see why there is an increase in sales in retail in these uh, months. While here, for example, there are people who are uh, going back home or students who are on a vacation or uh, so usually there are less footfall in these uh, months from April to June and, and also this is the accuracy of the model so these are KPIs or key performance indicators for the forecasting the mean uh, the mean error root mean square error mean absolute error mean percentage error these are good indicators of whether our forecast is doing a good job or is doing a not so good job. So for example, the mean absolute error, it tells me every month how wrong I am from reality or from the actual sales. And it shows that I'm usually wrong by, let's say 3000 uh, items. Of course, all of these figures are hypothetical. It's not, uh, it's not accurate, but even though if my forecasting is 20,000 and my error is 3,000 or 4,000, it's not doing a very bad job in terms of forecasting, especially with the magnitude and with the increase of scale, uh, the error tends to be bigger. But of course, there is all the time uh, areas for improvement. So, and we can forecast units sold, we can forecast the revenue we can forecast the profit. Okay. And then the next step is the comparisons. So let's say I want to compare between Jan 2018 and Jan 2019 to see the performance month to month on the same period. So for the 100 dirhams bucket, in terms of revenue, we can see that there is an improvement because here uh, revenue was 160,000, while here it's 230,000. So there is a 30.48% increase in total revenue. And you can do the same for profit, for total units sold, for average transaction value or the number of invoices. Of course, if the revenue increase, you can see, so let's compare the invoice number. You can see, yes, correctly, that the number of invoices here are around 4,000, 4, while here it's 6,000. So this can explain why the revenue increased. 
So it's a good way to compare between months to months. You can compare of the say uh, one month from previous year and one month from the current year, or you can compare, for example, Jan to Feb. Uh, finally, for this application, we also based on our client requirement, we added uh, size analysis. So it's always good to know, uh, especially in retail. We don't like in smartphones. It's let's say it's iPhone 6 and it's iPhone 6 all the time but uh, the shirts differ in sizes in retail the pants different size the colors there is a color preference as well so we cannot expect to buy the same quantity of everything we have to differentiate because consumers tend to buy more of one size than the other right so for example these are all hypothetical uh, SKUs or families for example, for this family, the brackets family, the consumers tend to buy more X large. So in the future, when we talk to our supplier, we keep that in mind and we, we plan with them for the replenishment, replenishment horizon and interval. We keep in mind that consumers really like X large in the brackets family name, right? And it goes on with jackets and pants and so on, right? Okay. And the same thing goes for colors. So for example, in the brackets, X large is the high sale, high sale SKU, while in colors, for example, we can find that red is the highest uh, sale SKU. So it's good to know which SKUs tends to be more uh, uh, promotional and tends to be more demanding for consumers. So our stock can always be uh, uh, healthy and uh, uh, replenished in a timely, a very good tool to analyze the business health for especially for retail. And it can be a way to plan for the uh, marketing and operations for the future. This is also good side by side by the stock management application that also we are developing for our client and also the uh, sales and operational planning application. Uh, as you can see, the applications are highly customized based on the client's needs. And uh, it's usually involving data science and supply chain. So our applications are more focused on supply chain side of the business, but we also can do other applications based on the client requirements. Sometimes we employ machine learning and artificial intelligence as well. If the client wants the recommendation to be automated and uh, we also can do uh, training and uh, and uh, orientation sessions of how to use these uh, applications finally these applications are run by real time so we don't have to update it every day it's updated on its own it's basically connected to the database and uh, uh, it is run through the uh, as we can see through uh, uh, a website or a portal or an IP address and uh, it, ha it, it can be granted access to any user in the business uh, that's it so I hope you can find this useful uh, in terms of information and if you need any uh, uh, help in making such applications to your business please do let us know uh, and we would much appreciate your feedback and if there are areas to improve if there are uh, sections we can add we can also happily do so thank you so much for your time and uh, see you again in other uh, tutorials